said to me, oh, look, it's a part of me. Um, then again, I'm not going to go to the cliches to try and describe. It's very, it's very, it's important to me. It's important to me that it does well. I, I think one of the, the greatest feeling I got from the grand final night was that I was happy for the club. I was happy that this club uh, saw some success because it deserves it. I mean, this club is great for football. I mean, don't make no mistake about that. And to to go for long periods of time and see this club without any success breaks your heart. Because sometimes in life. Uh, if you do well in life, you usually get rewarded. Are you still up in the clouds after the win, mate? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Look, it was a great win because um, uh, at the, the, when the siren went on that night and the Sunday and that following week, it was all uh, just such elation. But now, uh, like a week or two after, um, you just sit back and just think, um, you had a right team won the premiership. There was no, no one can chuck at us that uh, they were lucky or shouldn't have been there. Um, the fact that they were uh, the better side all year um, went on to win the premiership, which I think was uh, which is how it should go. I mean, there are many grand finals we've been in the past where they've probably haven't didn't deserve the right to be there or fell in there by a bit of luck or whatever, and that's been indicative of winning the score lines in our losing grand finals. We just shouldn't have been there, and maybe we were hoping that uh, for all these strange things to go right for us on the day to win. But this one in particular in 2010 was different because we did deserve to be there. We were the better side all year and it would have been an injustice had St Kilda have beaten us the week before because we were the better side out. Um, I've got another question for you regarding the draw grand final. Describe your feelings after that, that day. I was, seriously, I was filthy on Collingwood, I was dirty, and I think I made a comment to someone in the media during that day of what is it with bloody Collingwood in grand finals, because that wasn't the Collingwood that we followed all year. They went to an early lead in the game and dropped their bundle. They, they couldn't kick bloody goals, and all year we're thinking, if we get into the grand final, we're going to improve our kicking, okay? Because in some games during the year, our kicking was a little bit astray. And it cost us a couple of games. And we're sort of thinking, this happens in a bloody grand final. You just, it's nightmare stuff. When you, when you miss goals 35 metres out on grand final day, you just think to yourself, what are these blokes doing? They've been playing football since they were five or six. They've been kicking the ball all their lives. And on the most important day, not only of their life, but ours, they're kicking points. Yeah. And you, what the hell's going on here? So, look, look, I was dirty. I was living on, and we're allowed to be dirty, we're allowed to be livid, we're allowed to be upset because what we saw wasn't what they had showed us all year. And, uh, but we knew, on the, uh, coming home we knew that if they could improve on those horrible things the following week, they would win, and they did. They were a better side than what they were on, the, on that drawing grand final, but we were lucky, we were lucky to get out of that. It's really a question that's overlooked. I don't think many viewers out there would know truly how you became the leader of the cheer squad. It has baffled me. Well, look, I'm not really the leader of the cheer squad. I think that's just a throwaway line. The yeah. king, anything, mate. Any, no, 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 not the king. Any description? No, no, not the king. No, look, I'm just no, uh, no, 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 no. Harness the ego. Harness, you've got to harness the ego. Look, it's very, look, it's, it's very important you get carried away with all this stuff. But the jacket brought me, the gold jacket brought me into prominence and, um, and people chuck away lines, you know, it's the number one supporter, I've never said that, the king of the Magpie Army, I've never said that, that's what other people see and I can't control what they say, I'm no different to you Adam, I'm no different to the bloke up in Ray Q, my passion and your passion and his passion is exactly the same. But because I was, uh, because I'm able to dance around the terraces in a gold jacket, not many people can do that, Adam. Do you think that we can possibly?
possibly go back to back next year? Well, look, you know, you hear all this stuff. Look, let me be very honest about football. Just because you've made a grand final, there's no guarantee they're going to go. They're even going to get there again next year, or even win it. We had a lot of, uh, uh, we had things go our way this year. We had very limited injuries. Things just went our way. Okay. Now, go back to the Hawthorne Premiership several years ago. The following season, people saying then this is the start of a new Hawthorne dynasty. They returned to the arenas six months later and were fell down by injury. The and grand final hangover, I think they called it. As yes, well. but they had heaps of injuries, and they never recovered from those injuries. Those injuries, those injuries lingered on even until this year. Uh, they, they've still had injury problems. There's no guarantee. Enjoy the premiership. Uh, enjoy what it means to you, be happy for our club. If we do go back to back next year, all the better, fantastic, but nothing in football is guaranteed. But you would be disappointed if Collingwood were not a top four side next year, just because the way things are placed at the moment with the two new clubs, none of the other clubs getting prize picks. Yeah, of course. The St Kilda window of opportunity closing, Geelong sliding without Ablett, Footscray, we're not too sure about Footscray yet, but Collingwood, they should still be up there and they should still, they, they'll probably have a good season, but let's just take it from there. The way that I think Joff has got himself up to the top of the hierarchy is purely, the way that he speaks is just so professional. The way that uh, Joff relates to the kind of faithful truly is amazing. Uh, he's a very down-to-earth guy and he's been really smart to climb to the top and, and get where he is today.